Well, hey everyone, welcome back, welcome back to the podcast. We are hanging out again, I'm back. My view, my opinion, the MVMO podcast. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, Check the description box if you are new, passing through, and you have questions about me, um, about the podcast, anything. So of course, I'm back with another listener requested topic. My thoughts on the recent, what the media, what right now, uh, the Federal Bureau of, of Investigations, the FBI, is calling um, an assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump at his Butler, Pennsylvania rally. So that's what I want to talk about. That's what my listeners have asked me to talk about, and so I am going to oblige. And um, I have to say, this is a request that I openly welcome. You know, like I said, I want to talk about it. Now, I will tell y'all, for me, until the investigation is over, I am making a conscience, conscious decision to refer to this this way. What people are calling, what people are calling an assassination attempt. And that doesn't mean that I believe in any kind of a conspiracy theory. Listen, listen, listen. Don't put your thoughts in my mouth. <laughs> don't, go, don't go there. Um, it has nothing to do with that. I've just learned. I mean, listen, a lot of us are older and we know better. We know that things aren't always what they seem. And we know sometimes things are exactly the way they appear to be. But time brings all things into perspective. And this is one of those instances where in terms of speaking factually about the incident, I think it's best for those of us who can to wait to call it what it will be factually after the investigation is completed. Now, that doesn't mean we can't speak on it like I'm doing today. I'm answering my listeners, listener requests, but you, you understand, I think, what I'm saying. So what are my thoughts Well, listeners, I will tell you, um, I know that a lot of people, um, if they are part of corporate media, they have to say, oh, we're so sorry. You know, we're just so glad that the former president is okay." You know, you know, that's a part of it. Um, I don't have that kind of pressure, I guess, is what I'm saying. I don't feel like I have to do that. Um, I believe in giving commentary and letting the chips fall where they may. If people leave, let them leave. I mean. That's just life. People leave, people go, people come. I mean, that's life, right? Um, I felt absolutely nothing, and that's normal. When I heard the news that the president, um, someone had shot at the president, or what they're calling a shot at the president, um, I didn't feel anything. I was like, oh, okay, next. (laughs) Why? Because I'm a bad person? Absolutely not. You see, we talked about this life principle with Kim Burrell. See, I got to take you away from Donald Trump to get those of you to see what I'm saying. Remember gospel singer Kim Burrell, who had spent all of her her career being nasty to people, calling them names, talking about people who are who she's better than how, you know, she doesn't live in a trailer, but they may live in a trailer. You know, she dresses in $2,000 boots and they are, you know, getting their shoes from the Goodwill. You know, all the crazy stuff that she said. So then when we found out she was sick and struggling to pay her bills, nobody gave a hoot. See, it's human nature. When people have been so nasty, if something bad happens to them, the normal human reaction is, oh, well, next. Now, let's talk about the next step. We can all override our normal, natural human reaction and, and say, well, I, I shouldn't feel this way. You see, I, I've lived long enough, not to mention I've worked with enough people to know you, you, you never chastise people for just being human. And there are some things they're just a part of human nature. They don't make anyone bad or good. It just, it's just human nature. For instance, we all wake up and we stretch. It's human nature. It's actually, um, we could say, 
being in this earth sphere is what every animal does. And as human beings, we are just a higher evolved animal. We all know that, right? We pee, animals pee. We poop, they poop. We yawn, they yawn. And we should say they yawn, we yawn because they've been here longer than we have. Um, You know, they sleep, we sleep. You know, they have families, we have families. They have eyelashes, we have eyelashes. You understand what I'm trying to get at here? See, it's a natural human thing. And I'm going to tell you something. Now, you don't have to believe this, but I'm going to tell you. Every single person, even the ones that support Trump, even the ones who were out there, when this incident occurred, their first reaction was, oh, okay, what do we expect? You know, this would eventually happen or something like that. Now, again, they may have overrode that like two seconds later, but I find, and I know this from personal experience working with so many people, that most people, not all, most people are so out of touch with themselves, they actually think their second reaction was their first reaction, but that's not true. If you're really in tune with yourself, you know what your first reaction was. Now, you may have your second reaction may have been guilt, for, for, but you, then you have to, to ask yourself, why do I feel guilty? You know, this is not like this was Mother Teresa or some person who had done great for great things. I mean, when people are nasty, degrading, low down people, like who feels bad for the child molester if the child molester gets run over in the street? Not a single person. Everybody goes, oh, okay, well, next. But again, we can override that and go, well, we shouldn't feel this way. I never say that we should feel that way. It's called being human. (laughs) You know, I know a lot of people think that they're angels, but they're not. They're actually humans. Just talk to the people, know them, the people who live with them, they'll tell you. So that was my first reaction was, oh, okay, flip it off. What's, 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 what else has happened? Okay. But my second reaction was, hmm. That was it. I didn't, I didn't say to myself or to anybody else. Oh, I didn't say, I didn't say anything like that because I would have been lying to them and they would have known anyway, because we talk about Trump all the time. Um, Because all of my friends, not to mention my man, my, my siblings, my cousins, we're all heavily into politics. We believe in, in being, having, we believe in knowing what's going on in the world. You have to, so that you know how to move in the world. And you know what's happening and how to maneuver. Not saying I I think I I don't I wouldn't say for myself that that my entire life I've been that way. I shouldn't go that far. But I would say probably right around turning 30 or 35, which was a long time ago. That's when I was like, hmm. but my parents were always they set that example for us. Uh, My immediate family. I mean, my parents set that example that you I mean, my mom and dad were constantly reading a newspaper or watching the news or having certain types of discussions. So, of course, you take on, you know, these types of things from your parents just as if you would take on, you know, anything else. So, yeah. So, um, and just to be even more honest with my listeners who ask me my personal thoughts on this, um, I haven't had one concern about it at all. I don't really care, just to be very honest. See, I'm not a part of corporate media. So I don't have any obligation to lie or to come on here and pretend that I'm not human. That when someone has been nothing but nasty, that I'm I'm going to have all these um, jubilant, loving feelings. And see, I have matured enough to know it doesn't mean anything about me. It doesn't mean anything about my character. It just means I'm responding the way any normal human being would in a situation where you have seen who a person is. Like I said, I don't know about you, but I don't, I would never feel sorry if the child molester got run over. I'd be like, oh, okay, now who was it? Who ran him over? I might be interested in knowing about them, but oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm unsubscribing right now. Did I ever ask you to subscribe? See, are you thinking? You're going to tell someone who never asked you to subscribe that you're unsubscribing? What sense does that make? Now, the next thing I want to say, I have learned something and I want to share it with y'all. When ish is going down, you don't pay attention to the people who are constantly talking. You pay attention to the people who aren't saying much. 
And I feel like as I've been watching people's reaction on social media and because that's part of the thing I do as a blogger, I'm on, or a DL blogger, you know, I'm on the DL with this thing, right? Um, a part of my research is I, I go out there, social media, I creep and I tiptoe, you know, who doesn't have a dummy social media account? I do. Um, it's not under my podcast name. You would never guess what the name is, and it's for sure not under my, my name, my real name. But, um, and I just hang around, just see what people are talking about. You know, in comment sections on Instagram, you know, on threads, on X, I creep and I tiptoe all kinds of places. And I, I wanted to scream out because, see, I never comment in these places because that's not my purpose. My purpose is, is to see what other people are saying. Um, I thought no one is paying attention to the people who are really powerful. Because in any situation, the people who are really powerful, they are normally very quiet. It's the people running their mouths and yabbing, yeah, 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 all those people. Those are the people who have what I'm going to call faux power or faux influence. See, when you have real power, when I have real power, we don't need to go on a convincing campaign. You know, we don't need to do any of that stuff. People who have real power to change a situation, to influence a situation, they are normally the quietest ones in a conversation. So I have certain people. So you say, well, who are they? Well, Let me just say to you, whoever you've been paying attention to when it comes to this particular situation that we're discussing on the podcast today, are they someone who is really powerful or someone who has faux power, faux influence? So I will always be training myself to pay attention to the quiet people in any situation. Because behind the scenes, those people are making moves. But who, who doesn't know in 2024 that when you're making moves, you sh- we should all keep our mouths closed? <laughs> See, when you're making moves for real, you ain't got to put everything on social media. You're not even going to. Matter of fact, that's the least of your thoughts is to get on social media and show everybody, let's just say the fact, tell everybody you're about, you're working on getting a brand new car. If it was something like that, let's use a very small and simple example. No, you get the car, then you post, you see, you make the moves, then you speak, (laughs) right? So that's something else I've been doing. Just paying attention to those who are quiet in this situation. Who's being quiet. Those are the ones I need to pay attention to. Those are the ones whose social media I need to keep a lookout for because I can promise you guys those who are truly powerful are making moves behind the scenes. Now, I'll transition to this. Do I think, and my listener did not ask me this, by the way, this is just something I wanted to add in. Do I think there will be another attempt on the former president's life Yeah. You want to know why? We have to remember that crazy people are not just are not just um, the ones that you can stir up to do your bidding, which is what Donald Trump, in my view, my opinion, has done. He stirred those people up to go to the Capitol and storm the building and break in and kill. Remember one guy defecated on the floor. Now, they had their own problems. We know that. You know, he, he was responsible for that, in my opinion. But crazies are not just on that side. They're not just for you. There are also crazies who are against you. (laughs) See, that's the bad thing about violent rhetoric, no matter where it comes from. There will be people who love us. Let's just, I'm going to use myself. If I'm going to go out there and say, kill, 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 do it for me or whatever. Let's just how, however I say it, but I incite people to violence. There will be people who love me so much and support me so much. They'll go and they'll like the guy did two summers ago in August of 2022. 
Remember, he went to the FBI office after Trump stirred up his base, his supporters about how terrible the FBI people were. Oh, my God, they came and they they just, you know, raided my home. And that guy, the crazy, one of the crazies, he went and he went to a local FBI field office and he called himself going to handle business and he got handled. He died. Remember the guy who left his home somewhere down there in Texas? He drove over 600 miles to, I believe it was either Waco, Texas or El Paso, Texas. And he shot up innocent women, children in the parking lot of a Walmart because he said in his little tired manifesto, the president is right. We need to make sure these migrants, these immigrants stop coming into coming in and crossing the border. See, there are crazies who are for you, but again, there are crazies who are against you. So do I think that this will be the last attempt? No. Do I think that someone will ultimately be successful? I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you there probably will be another attempt. Because the closer we get to November, uh, the more unhinged he's going to become, because that's just the nature of his psychosis. But because his psychotic symptoms have spread to the masses, there will be people who can't tame and can't control their psychosis, and they will act. They will act. Do I think the former president is responsible for what happened at his rally? Yes, I do. You see, you can't, you cannot behave, act, speak the way he has and not expect there to be violence. Remember at one of his rallies, Some years ago, he actually encouraged people to beat up those in the audience who dissented. They actually punched a reporter. He encouraged it. And then he said, drag, I believe his words were drag the motherfucker out. Remember when he told the police officers to be a little bit rough with the black man? You speak violence, violence comes on your head. All of us as Christians know that. That's a Bible principle. That's a spiritual principle. We talk a lot about the laws of life here, that in this earth system, there are natural laws in place. Gravity is one. You know, the wind can be a nice, gentle breeze on our cheek. It can become a destructive force. But it's all the wind. So as the, as the, as the individual, he, can, he, he can't actually control himself because he does have a psychotic uh, issue, but, you know, in this case, he's the win. He can, he can, to a certain degree, choose to be that soft breeze or that destructive force. Well, when you become that destructive force, well, you're part of it. So, yes, a part of it comes back on you. It's just a natural law. It's a natural law. I don't know about you, but I don't feel guilty about observing natural laws. If somebody jumped down from the building and they said, I'm going to, you know, I am special. Yes, I understand that gravity is a force. We can't feel it. We can't see it. We can't smell it. We for sure can't taste it, but we know it's real. It keeps us grounded here on planet Earth. But I feel that I'm special. So I'm going to go ahead and climb up on top of it, this building, and I want you all to watch how special I am. When the person crashes to the ground, I don't know about you, but it's kind of like, well, bad decision, right? What am I saying? We can't defy natural laws. We can't defy the laws that are in place and come out unscathed. It just doesn't work that way. What am I ultimately saying? You can't speak violence and it not come on you. It's just, it's like trying to play in mud and not get dirty. I don't know in what universe any person expects something like that. Yeah. Now, I want to end on something I feel is extremely important. 
Um, a lot of you have heard me talk about for the last six years, a forensic psychologist by the name of Dr. Bandy, B-A-N-D-Y, Lee, L-E-E. Actually, you can find her on any social media, Bandy X Lee. I personally believe for my life, I'm only speaking for me, this podcast is my listeners asking me my personal opinion on public situations. So I'm not trying to speak for you. My thoughts won't be your thoughts. Your thoughts may or may not be mine, right? But for me in my life, she is someone that I follow. She is someone I study after, not just because she's brilliant, but because she has actually been in the field. And unlike a lot of people, I actually believe in science. I believe in scientists. I believe in expert opinions. She is a forensic psychiatrist and psychologist. Her specialty is violence. She's worked over 25 years in prisons with gang and the cell block gangs and worked with some of the most violent people on our earth. And she was a a professor at Yale. And when she decided seven years ago, almost eight now, that she saw a threat to public health by the name of Donald J. Trump, she decided to speak out about it. And then, of course, 34, maybe it was 36, I think it ultimately culminated in 37, which included Dr. Lee. She led the charge of writing a book called The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump where all the mental health professionals who agreed with her assessment that he was a threat to our, not just our democracy, and see, people have said that, to where people don't even, that it doesn't even mean anything to them. But she was saying he's a threat to our public health because he's psychotic. And he is just like all the people I've worked with. And so... Their book quickly became a New York Times bestseller. In this book, they predicted January 6th. You know, people are always wanting predictions. What's going to happen? Is such and such a prophet? Is such and such a prophetess? You know, because they think such people only come in one form. They don't understand that people who are experts are your prophets in, in, in a certain way, in a certain arena. It's because of her work that I have really truly come to understand that people like Donald Trump who have a, a psycho, multiple um, uh, issues mentally, they will ultimately self-destruct. Now, what people want to know is how, like, will it be the legal system that does it, meaning he'll go to jail, or will it be this, will it be that, will it be another shooter, blah, 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 because that's just human nature. They, we just want to know how is this going to work, when is this going to happen? But, you know, we talk a lot about patience, imploring patience, and just letting the process work itself out. Most of you listening to me are much older, and you ought to know by now, by virtue of living as long as you have, that evil always ultimately self-destructs. Evil always destroys itself. Surely you shouldn't be out there like the young folks, the 18-year-olds and the 20-year-olds and the 30-year-olds, even, the say, the 40-year-olds who don't know what's going on, who don't understand, who are so full of fear and anxiety. You, as one of the elders amongst us, you and me and others, we should be able to point them to people who are experts and say, go listen to this person. It'll help dispel your fear and anxieties. You should be an example of not being full of fear and anxiety because you've lived long enough to see what happens when people who are evil, evil never lasts long. Evil always self-destructs. But I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing people who are much older, 60s, 70s, they're just, they're more afraid than the people who are in their who was 18. It's like, what's happening here? You with more life experience, who's seen more, you should be able to look back on that and picked up something and say, I've lived a long time. We know what happens to people like this. We've seen it over and over and over. So I take real issue with people who simply go through life and they have nothing to turn around and give to younger people to say, hey, don't worry about it. I'm not saying don't be concerned and, of course, keep yourself informed so that you know how to maneuver in this world. But don't worry about it. That's how I could come on here a few weeks ago and say that I believe Joe Biden will win 
this election because I have faith, not faith in God, which I have, but I'm talking about I have faith in people. Most people are good. I've lived long enough to have seen that in my life, and you have too. Most of the people, take all your years, if you're 49, if you're 59, if you're 69, take most, take your years, most of the people that you've encountered have been good people. And most of us would say we're good people. Most of us can say we've lived the majority of our lives and not really had to tangle with too many really, really, really terrible people. Of course, there's an exception to every rule. Do we need to keep saying that? Yeah, we do. But most people are good. Not to mention Donald Trump has never won the popular vote ever. Remember what happened? Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. And brought the protest. And then in 2020, Joe Biden won the popular vote. Right? So what makes people think that he's going to win the popular vote? And I'm going to tell you something. This whole, what people are calling an, an assassination attempt, that is just going to breed and brood in those who are good to say, uh-uh, no way do I want violence to continue. See, what did we say? What, what was I saying to you earlier? What was I encouraging all of us? Pay attention to what's happening. Most people, most people do not want to live in a country where there are assassination attempts. They want to live peacefully. They're just like me and they're just like you. And yet, I, again, I see more people saying, they're, they're, I just know he's going to win the election. Now, based on what? See, people are not being logical. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Babe and I have this discussion with a group of friends. We are really concerned. And maybe because we're all educators at heart, we're really concerned at the lack, the utter lack, or it seems the decreasing ability of people to think critically. Based on what? Based on what? An, an, an assassination attempt? <laughs> so then you think the majority of Americans want violence? Where's the critical thinking abilities here? I'm not talking about you, ma'am, you, sir. <laughs> I'm speaking about the proverbial you, the, the, the person out there on social media who's saying, Project 2025, everybody should be feared, afraid, as if we don't know history, as if we don't know that there were people who learned from the experience of Hitler. We've had people who survived that situation, and they've spoken out. They've written books, those who have passed on. We've seen this playbook before. Does that mean people shouldn't be aware of what's in Project 2025? I didn't say that. I'm saying people shouldn't be afraid. Oh, they're going to do. Any of you old enough to remember Y2K? All the commercials of people selling products. See, there are people who take advantage, I'm trying to say, of times like these to sow fear and discord because it's their time to make money. And what's happening? I believe there's already being merchandise um, sold with the image of the bloody ear. So it's fascinating to a lot of us that people don't see. They don't have the ability to step outside of the situation and observe what's happening. And check this out, not get caught up in it. <laughs> I'm not afraid, and you shouldn't either. You shouldn't be either. Afraid of what? what see, sometimes you got to confront your fears and say, now exactly what am I afraid of? Oh, I'm afraid that our country is going to be taken over. Now, how long have you lived? Now, you're telling me you're 69. You've lived 69 years. Okay, so in your entire lifetime, how many times have you seen what you're afraid of actually come to pass? Probably never or maybe once. But then what happened after that one time? Now, I'm not speaking of those of you immigrated from other countries where, you know, you were running a, running from a dictatorship or some sort of situation. I'm speaking of those who have who lived all their life in the U.S., Again, I didn't say that we shouldn't be informed. There's a difference between being informed and concerned versus being scared, panicky, fearful. Those are those are like miles apart, y'all.
the majority of Americans, the majority of Americans understand what is happening and the majority of Americans are going to go out and vote. And the majority of Americans are going to vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. If after the Democratic convention in a few weeks, Biden decides to step aside and Kamala becomes the nominee and she has to choose her VP, the majority of Americans are going to continue forward with the Democratic ticket, be that Harris and another individual or Biden and Harris. That's what the majority of Americans are going to do. How can I say that? Because the majority of Americans did that two times before. You see, what do they tell all of us? If you want to predict the future, you can actually look at the past. Patterns. But the crazies have a loud microphone. The crazies, you know, seem to get more attention than the people who are quietly powerfully influencing things. So as I get ready to end, I will tell you guys, I'm staying informed because that's what a responsible citizen does. I am personally am not concerned. I'm not saying you shouldn't be. I'm just telling you about me. I'm not concerned. I'm not fearful. I don't have a reason to be. Oh, there's a reason. Oh, no, but you probably live most of your life afraid of this and afraid of that and nervous about this and nervous about that, taking pills for this. and Not everybody lives their life that way. And there are a lot of people, believe it or not, y'all, who've seen this movie before. They live before us. They've written books about it. Some of these people are still alive to tell us. All, uh, most Americans, not all. So I don't, I don't want to ever say all when it comes to this conversation. But the most Americans understand that our democracy seriously is at risk. Most Americans have no desire to live in a dictatorship. Most Americans have no desire for Project 2025. And you would only be worried about that if you actually think most Americans are going to go for that. See, that's what, you know, we were talking about, like, Where's the critical thinking? Where, where's the ability to lay things on the table and search, seek them out and say, okay. I mean, I actually have people writing into this podcast saying, have you read Project 2025? Oh, you better. Oh, we all need to be. Okay. You obviously are very afraid, <laughs> which tells me there are other things going on with you that have nothing to do with Project 2025. So you need to get that stuff under control. Oh, I never said, see, don't put words in my mouth. I never said that people weren't going to try to get something off the ground. They tried to overthrow the government just a couple of years back. But you look at that. See, See, refer back to the past. How successful was that? And aren't most of those people in jail? And look at the man who attacked Nancy Pelosi's, Nancy Pelosi's husband. Isn't he now sentenced to 30 years in prison? What I'm trying to say is that get back into balance, y'all. For those of you who are so concerned and so nervous, get back into balance. Get back into balance. Critical thinking is a great tool to help you, you get back in balance if you need to. And if for some reason you're so far gone with the fear and the, the dread and the whatnot and this and that because you've been filling yourself with listening to the wrong people who are saying, be afraid, you better be, you better watch out, you better blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, one of the things you need to do is turn off those voices and find other voices. For me, one of those voices is Dr. Bandy X. Lee. I'm a Christian, so I'm going to use this, this um, Christian example. But you can just flip it and find something that equates to it, that fits your religious belief. In the Bible, the Bible does say that knowledge is power, right? But it also says people perish 
for the lack of knowledge. So I've found in my life, anything that's going on, if I just get more knowledge, if I just understand what's happening, I feel better equipped and more confident to face whatever the challenge is head on. Dr. Bandy Exley, for me, is one of the experts I go to. And I listen and I've read and I've studied. I've, I watch a lot of her interviews. And we're going to go out um, together. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll just put the interview that I'd like to share with you guys as the first comment. I'm going to do my best to try to remember. I know sometimes I say that. And then when I'm editing, I totally forget. And in, unless I listen to the episode back, which I normally don't have time to do, I will totally forget. So I'm going to have to make myself a note. Uh, when I'm editing to make sure that I pin this. But for those of you who aren't familiar with her work, I'm going to paste um, an interview. Now I will tell you, my interest is Dr. Bandy Lee. So please understand that whoever she was interviewing with, don't, don't say, like some people say, oh, I didn't know you watched that news program. I don't watch that news program. She was just on that particular news program. I can't help where the woman goes. <laughs> So don't, don't make those types of assumptions, but I'm going to share with y'all um, a recent interview that she did. But if you want to know her thoughts on the recent, what people are calling an assassination attempt on the former president's life, she wrote about it on Substack, and I love the advice she gave. And I thought, wow, that's what I would have told anybody, you know, you got to get back to center. You got to get back to make what makes you happy. And see, people think that's like the wrong advice to give. No, you should be telling people to be more concerned and be more fearful. For what? Why? You tell people to stay informed, but some people don't know how to stay informed without becoming fearful, without becoming anxious. Why? Because the things that matter in life, like managing our emotions, they've never really quite done that well. So, you know, you can't really help those people because their issue is not Trump and the MAGA and the Project 25, their issue is all my life, I've never quite learned to manage my emotions. I'm going to always get out of balance. Well, that's a deeper issue. Those people aren't going to be able to watch much without veering into fear and anxiety and can't sleep and nightmares and dread. And then before you know it, they're looking for confirmation bias. They start watching people who claim that God told them this and God told them that. And oh my God, this and that. And see, that just now confirms their fears. It confirms their anxiety. They're deeper down the hole now. And then they go around in comment sections telling everybody else. And then they start spreading their own fear and spreading their anxiety to other folks saying, well, you better do this and we're going to listen guys everything is gonna be okay now does that mean folks ain't gonna get hurt of course people are gonna get hurt but again if people listen we got we talk about this all the time if people are gonna make choices (laughs) they're gonna benefit from those choices or they're gonna suffer because of those choices And we don't like that. We don't like to hear that. People who get killed at rallies, now you think about it, and I want you to be very commonsensical. Here we are in 2024. People who have not, even though the truth is out there about Donald Trump and his lies, the truth is out there. I always go back to this. The 62 court cases brought before Democratic and Republican judges where His team, which comprised Rudy Giuliani at the time and some others, who are now disbarred, going to jail, carted off to jail, been indicted, right? When the judges said, okay, where's the evidence of widespread voter fraud? Where's the evidence that the election was stolen? Where is the evidence? Because we're welcome. We're ready to hear if you got the evidence. And those court filings, which you can go online and read the transcripts of, they say we don't have any evidence. We just think it happened. Well, then they all 62 cases got thrown out. So you see people who have ignored the truth and they're going to go on supporting somebody anyway. Yeah, you might just get killed at a rally. Am I going to feel bad about that? I personally am not because I understand what's happening there. You made a choice. And unfortunately, that choice didn't have a reward attached to it. It had a consequence. But it was your choice because your life is yours to do what you want with. And if you're going to, at this point, still be believing lies when you could easily, easily read the truth. 
you're going to get whatever comes with believing lies. People want you to to say, aww. Do we not understand choices, consequences, rewards, guys? Cause and effect. Do we not understand that? And listen, I am a very compassionate person, very loving and kind, a very lovely human being. But I just have lived long enough to know and having worked with the public for so long, I have come to accept there is something built into, the, into life called cause and effect. And it doesn't always come down for me the way I would want it to. But if I make a decision, I have to live with that. We talked about this same principle with Megan Good when we were covering the listener request, you and I, of Megan Good. Megan Good is an adult. She is making a choice, 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 choice to ignore everyone who loves her to say, don't date this guy, leave him alone. We went through all the things she ignored and she has made a decision. I'm sticking with Jonathan. So if Jonathan breaks her neck, if Jonathan runs over her with a car, that came with her decision. It wasn't some strange phenomenon that fell out the sky. It's called cause and effect. It's called choices, consequences, and rewards. It works that way for all of us. The reason people were warning her is because they They love her enough to not want to see her neck broken, her foot run over, her beat to a pulp. But if she, knowing who he is, is going to date him anyway, she's going to get what comes with dating him. And in that case, you can't say, oh, you have to say, well, she obviously is choosing the path of I must go through this to learn. Because she won't listen to learn, so she's going to have to experience a broken neck, maybe. A ran over foot. She's going to have to be beat. And she and there are some people, even after all that, they still don't learn. All, all of us know people like that. They went back. Matter of fact, a friend of mine was telling me. Um, he was telling us, I should say, he's a pastor. And so sometimes, you know, there's advice or whatever, whatever. And he was saying, oh, <laughs> one of the one of his members is a mother called him saying, I want you to go over to such and such's house and pray. She's gone back to, I'm just going to make up a name because I don't want to say the real name. She's gone back to Joey. And he said, I said, Joey, who cut her two months ago? And she was in the hospital for a week. Yeah. Joey, who tried to strangle her two years ago? Yeah. Joey, who beat her so bad, but he said, I just went through everything. He said, I ain't going over there. She's going to have to get what she gets. You see, there's no praying for people like that. And I know people don't like to hear that because they actually don't understand free will and prayer. They think you can just pray, pray any old thing. When a, when a, when a grown person is making choices, see, that's their free will in effect. And see, that's not the same as intercession. No, if she wants to go back and he done beat her, cut her, choked her, I'll let her go back. I'm not going over there to talk to her about what? What do we say about men good? Feel sorry for about what? Wish her well on what? We need to ask ourselves, what exactly are we saying here? When an adult makes a decision, they're going to suffer. So if you have chosen to ignore all the truth about Trump that's out there, and you're going to take your kids to a rally, you might die. That's kind of how it rolls. That comes with what you've decided to do. You may walk out alive. That comes with what you decided to do. Oh, this is just so harsh. This is just so mean. Okay, so what you're telling me is you have, you've decided to live a life where you ignore choices, consequences, and rewards, or do you just want people to talk about the rewards of life? That's what you want? I am talking to you now, not the proverbial you. You. So you better teach your kids Choices, consequences, and rewards. See, people make choices and they want people to pray them out of the consequences. I'm sorry, we're not doing that. Because for some people, they just won't learn any other way. They got to get beat, drugged, and choked. And, and like I said, like that girl, still, you went back to him after he cut you two months ago? Okay. You were in the hospital for a week? Okay. You, what comes with your dis- choice may be death. Okay, if that's what you're going to make a choice to do is go back to Joey after all of that, you're also 
saying you understand you could die the next time. And that means you must be okay with that. But see, everyone thinks they're Superman or Superwoman. It just won't happen to me. Even though I'm making all these terrible choices, it's not going to happen to me. And then when it happens to them, people say, oh, how terrible. No, it's terrible. Yes, but this was a part of their choice. Now, check this out. After that shooting in Butler, Pennsylvania, there's going to be another rally. So then people are going to make a choice to go to that rally. So there may be people who die as a result of their choice. There may be people that walk out alive as a result of their choice. But when we make choices, we have to be prepared to accept any and everything that comes with that choice. The good and the bad, life and yes, death. You, you drive drunk. Oh, you may have made it through and made it home the last two parties. But if you drive drunk, that means you're aware that you could die. Oh, well, nobody thinks about that kind of stuff. I'm telling you that they should. Because that's a reality. It comes with your choice. And not just you, you might actually kill somebody else. And you may live to tell about it, but you'll spend the rest of your life guilt laden because you made a dumb decision that took the life of an innocent person. I feel that if more was taught, if we spent more time in schools teaching about choices, rewards and consequences, most people would not live the way they do. They wouldn't feel that they're just so special. They're going to get away with it. I'm just like Megan Good. I'm just so special and she is special. But you know what I mean by special, meaning you think you're going to be exempt. Or if it were me, I think I'm going to be exempt from the laws of life. Right, right, right. I'm just so special. See, people wouldn't have that, that, that mentality if they were taught from a very early age, choices, rewards, consequences, cause and effect. What goes around comes around. No, none of us are perfect. See, don't get crazy. I ain't talking about perfection. But there comes a point when we should grow up for real and we understand if I make this decision, a.k.a. this choice, am I really prepared for what could come with it? The Bible calls it this way, says it this way, count up the cost before you do something, before I do something. But see, we just skip over counting up the cost. We just do it because, well, it feels good. Or, hey, he's my man, so I'm going to go to the Trump rally. You just may die at the Trump rally. Are you prepared for that? Oh, I am. Oh, you got the I'm special thing. Even though you've seen what's happened at a lot of these rallies. So you've seen what's happened. You're making a choice anyway. Okay. If you get killed, we're going to hate that it happened. But we're going to understand that it was a part of your choice. It came with your choice. The most loving thing we can do is tell people the truth. The most loving thing we can do is teach people the truth. The most loving thing we can do, y'all, is speak the truth. Now, as I get ready to end, thank you, listener, for this request. A few of you, actually. I appreciate it. I don't feel bad that it happened. I understand. I think you do too, why it happened. And, um, right now there are very few facts, you know, they're still investigating and so on. So we know his name, we know more about his education. And so slowly, but surely things are coming to the surface. What do I think about the fact that we've now learned <clears throat> that the authorities were made aware 20 minutes before he was on the roof, that he was on the roof? Well, I don't know. I don't know. We have been made aware in this investigation so far that there were certain um, duties that were relegated to the local police, and then there were some that were relegated to Secret Service. We know Secret Service wasn't responsible for all safety measures at the event. As I said, 
the investigation is not complete and so there will be more information that comes. But at the end of the day, none of us should really be surprised. And as I end, I want to encourage every single one of y'all, listen, find you experts that you can listen to. I'm not an expert. Find you experts that you can listen to um, who have experience for real, y'all. I encourage you to, to, to follow Dr. Bandy Exley. You see, there are people like her, like Dr. Lance Dodes and others, who have worked with these types of people most of their career. So they can predict, because when people have a particular psychosis, their behavior is very predictable. They don't deviate from the from the uh, standard person. And so for me, as I said earlier, following her has given me great peace because I understand See, the knowledge that she imparts has given me power over my emotions, my feelings about the situation. I understand exactly what she said recently. People like this ultimately self-destruct. And she has she offers solutions as well. See, that's what I like too. I don't like when people just hammer on the problem, the problem, the problem, the problem. And then when they say they're going to give solutions, they don't give you anything practical or me anything practical that we can walk away with and like put into action right now. And other than her books, because that's how she makes a living now, because Harvard fired her over speaking out about Donald Trump, right? And she does do some... Um, uh, teaching, I think now at Columbia, they offered her a position, um, you know, other than trying to sell her books, which is very normal. Um, she, she's not out there trying to grift off anybody. Neither of her esteemed colleagues are. These are men and women. As I said, like, I forgot one guy, there's another guy who I've listened to a lot. He is a cult expert. He was a part of the Moonies. Any of the guys, you guys remember the Moonies cult, uh, back in the day? Um, he was a part of the Moonies and um, he was able to get out of that and, and get deprogrammed, as he calls it, many, many years ago. Uh, it's been 48 years now. He's been out there in private practice working with people one on one, helping them come out of the cults and, you know, all these things. And so, again, see, he's an ex- expert on cults and he wrote a book titled The Cult of Trump from his expertise. And he's also a psychologist, but Dr. Bandy Lee is a forensic psychologist. She's been asked by international figures to, to um, help make certain decisions because a lot of people, there are some governments, I should say, that understand that mental health officials need to be at the table when decisions are made, when it comes to a collective people. Because, you know, we hear this thing, mental health is so important, mental health is so important, but one of the great um, weaknesses of our particular government is that we don't, we, we say that we care about people's mental health. I mean, I, I really appreciate our current Surgeon General Vivek. I mean, he's making great strides, but outside of the Surgeon General, and there's not really any real mental expert, health experts who, who are called upon to say, hey, how should we tackle this to help keep the population mentally healthy? You know? And so I highly encourage you to follow her. I feel for those of you who have unintentionally gotten out of balance and your emotions have just got you all over the place, get back to knowledge. See, knowledge will bring you back down to center. You'll say, okay, I understand what's happening, this, that, and the third. And there are solutions given for you on a personal level. And um, yeah, and so that, and and listen, if you don't have a dime to purchase her books, she's got three right now, um, get a library card. From my understanding, most library cards are free right? Check it out from the local library. I'm a huge supporter of the local libraries. Um, A lot of you know that because I normally will show the books I'm reading that I've got from the library. I don't always go out and buy books. I don't always have the money to go out and buy books, right? You have to live on a budget. You have to make sure that you're not, you know, if you want to read something, if it's not available somewhere free, then maybe go purchase it, but check the free options first. And that's a way of supporting your local community and library by checking out the books and, you know, all those types of things. So, yes, find some experts for real, not armchair folk. You know, not the Joy Reeds, not the Roland Martins, the people who, what did I tell you, all who make their living. 
They're going to pay their mortgage off of the same narrative that really, in the grand scheme, hasn't helped anybody. You say, oh, but, but knowledge does help. Real knowledge comes with it, real solutions. What I see is a lot of people get stirred up emotionally by listening to certain people. But then those are the same people will turn around and say, well, yo, I ain't going to vote no way. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> so at the end of the day, guys, we're going to ha- all have to understand that people have made certain choices, not just regular old folk like me and you, but elected officials as well. And there's no point in going back and forth about J.D. Vance and he, what he said in 2000, such and such. At the end of the day, he's made his choices. And just like I've made my choices and you've made your choices, all of us are going to have to accept and live with both the rewards and the consequences of that choice. Those choices. And for some people, that might be death. (laughs) For some people, that might be jail. For some people, that might be you can never live down the embarrassing moment that was caught on social media. And now everyone in your neighborhood knows that you're crazy, that you were up at the Capitol. And now you've gotten fired from every job. You can't ever get a job. Remember the choice of Amy Cooper in Central Park some years ago that was caught on camera? She's suffered since. Somebody was saying recently, she's in a deep depression. And mm -hmm, she made a choice. That choice just so happened to be captured on film. And that's what happens. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode. I'll be back and I'll be sharing my thoughts on Project 2025, but not from the vantage point of what is Project 2025, because I feel like most people know that. But I'm going to be talking about how Project 2025 is already falling apart. And I'm going to talk to you about that. And then I'll be back to talk to you about what I think Biden's real plan is. Thanks so much, y'all, for tuning in. I enjoy y'all so much. Leave your thoughts about what we were discussing below, and I'll talk to you on the next podcast. Bye, guys.